Welcome to the latest Friendly Neighborhood Spider Pal. This time, Amazing Spider Man number two. So, um, just as I expressed uh, in the last couple of episodes, I think it's pretty interesting that um, Stan Lee is able to create these characters and scenarios that have withstood this, the test of time from the 1960s all the way till today. In fact, in the very second issue of Amazing Spider Man, we have um, two different uh, new villains that still exist uh, to the present day. Um, the first is the Vulture. So um, here he is introduced as a Spider-Man villain. And um, when I was last reading um, Amazing Spider-Man um, about 2012, 2013 or so uh, with Dan Slott writing, um, he was one of the uh, villains that, that was uh, in a major story arc after um, Spider Island, so he's still around all this time later. And the Tinker appears in here, and he's um, a little different than what he comes across later, so I actually had to look up on Comic Vine to see if it's the same guy, and it is the same guy. And we'll get to the differences later. So, um, in, in this issue, we have two different stories. Um, the first one features the Vulture, and um, I would say that there are two things that make this particular story uh, more of a 60s story than a modern story. And that is that the, um, the first page is very text heavy. And, you know, today's comics, they tend to have more room for the artist and do a more of a show than tell type of approach. The other thing is that the vulture is apparently a smart enough person that he's able to invent a flying suit that um, um, the big twist as part of this is why no one hears him coming even though he's flying <coughs> but um, he still has like this Riddler, Riddler as in the Batman Riddler um, this Riddler like stick where he tells the um, he tells the police department that he's going to steal these diamonds ahead of time rather than doing the smart thing and just stealing them and no one knows who did it and no one's expecting it and so on and so forth. Um, it turns out that um, the fact that he announces it, when it comes to the fact, um, if you ignore the fact that there's Spider-Man actually, it doesn't matter. He's smart enough to get away with it anyway. But um, uh, it does allow Spider-Man to catch him. Um, within the story, uh, we also end up with the long-term um, setup of Spider-Man making money, um, taking pictures of um, his health, himself and the enemy and stuff like that. Um, uh, that comes out within this story where J. Jonah Jameson wants some pictures of the Vulture and Spider-Man's in the perfect um, place to get them. And we'll get back to that stuff in a minute. Um, the second story is The Mad Tinker. Um, Spider-Man gets the chance to work with um, this guy who's the electronics expert of the world and um, he has some radio device that he needs repaired so he goes to the Mad Tinker. The Mad Tinker uh, is working with little green men, um, you know, some aliens uh, and he's putting something in the radios that allows him to spy on everyone. Um, of the two stories, this is the one that's a lot more 1960s as opposed to modern. First of all, there's little green men Yes, the Marvel Universe does have aliens, but they tend to be a lot more sophisticated nowadays. Um, these are not, you know, Shi'ar or any of the other aliens that, you know, you see later uh, in the Marvel Universe. Um, or the Kree or any of those, or the Skrull. Uh, it's just green men. And um, the fact that he's using radios to spy on people, um, you know, in a hand-wavy sort of way. You know, it's not like today... You know, he'd you know, be turning on webcams without people knowing or something. Like, it makes more sense today than it did back then. It's a lot more of a sci-fi slash, you know, alien plot. Um, but, again, a villain that, that survives to today. Uh, so if we go back to the first story and just talk about some of the um, themes and so on. Um, one of the things that this issue made me think about that I hadn't really thought about before, I'd just taken it for granted, is whether... It's um, ethical for Spider-Man to be um, taking pictures of his action and then selling those to the newspaper. Um, and, uh, you know, first, you know, he's able to get into places where 
at least back then it wasn't easy nowadays there might be other ways you know maybe the um the the bugle could pay the city of new york for footage from their you know their security cameras or something like that but you know back then spidey's kind of in the the only one who's in the place to do that and it does lead to him um trying to confront vulture in a certain way so that he can you know get the pictures um i'm kind of not really i haven't really made a decision how i feel about it but it's just something i never thought about i always took it for granted oh yeah that's what he does he takes pictures of himself and sells it to J. Jonah jameson isn't that great you know because jjj hates him at least as spider-man but yet he's making money off of you know spider-man's making money off of him so there's that whole joke aspect which i totally appreciate and you know um parker th draws attention to it in this issue um but it's just something i'd never really considered before um as for the the man tinkerer story um interestingly enough it's implied that he's an alien because um, parker stays with a with the guy's face you know like a mask so the guy had been wearing a mask uh and that's the reason i had to look it up on comic vine because we've never seen the mad tinker recently he's just been a guy um i suspect that similarly to the way that the guys who wrote back to the future say if they knew they were going to make a part two they wouldn't have put the girlfriend in the car because uh, then they have to write a story that deals with that aspect of it um, i think that if stanley knew that this was going to be a character that would be used for 50 60 years he would have perhaps not ended it that way so um, i guess it's been retconned or changed or so on um final th final thing to mention um just because it was so groundbreaking when marvel was doing it back then is the whole thing about peter making money selling photos of himself fighting the enemies is that it's actually a continuation of a storyline from the previous issue in the previous issue issue they introduced the fact that aunt may is now going to lose her house because uncle ben's not there to make any money which of course is peter's fault which is why he's trying to make money in all these different ways and that was unique back then the ability to um, have stories go from issue to issue to issue um, dc didn't really do that back then all their issues were self-contained um, and it was kind of reset button every time kind of like a saturday morning cartoon um, the only thing i mean if you excuse the alien plot as just an artifact of the 60s um, the only thing that really kind of stretched my suspension of disbelief in this issue is um, the fact that he gets paid so much for his vulture pictures um, that he's able to cover aunt may's um, rent payments for an entire year um, i understand um, story-wise stan's trying to put that behind us let's not worry about that going forward let's have other things that are in his life you know um, his, the fact that he's a social outcast um, eventually um, you know the mary jane stuff and so on and so forth but um, you know even though yes he does have pictures that everyone else wants and he's the only one that can get it i can't imagine you know in like in today's money right uh the rent for a house in the suburbs of new york city for a whole entire year i mean we're talking a lot of money just for some pictures um and you know parker's going to keep coming back to him uh, eventually he'll be employed and at that point i imagine then he's not really making so much per picture although he has a steady paycheck but um i think that's the only thing where i was like wow that's a lot of money for j Jones jameson to pay just to get pictures of the vulture so um that was it that was amazing spider-man number two um you know they introduced some iconic villains that are still around today and um you know the man Tinker story was a very 60s story but the vulture story could have taken place at any point other than the fact that he is one of like a 1960s bad guy and that he has to boast what he's doing as opposed to keeping a secret um so um let me know what you thought um comments um on the comic pal page or um on youtube when it appears on youtube um i prefer to keep them all together on the comic pal page so that we can have a conversation but um you know comments anywhere I'm, i always enjoy engagement with anything that i create and um thanks and i'll see you again next monday